Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at sensory pathways, also known as ascending pathways, pathways of the body that allow for sensory information to make it up to the brain for us to be consciously aware of them. So to begin, let's orientate ourselves with what I've drawn up here. We've got our two cerebral hemispheres of our brain. We've got the cortex of our brain, which is the outer two to three millimeters of the brain. And remember, if a sensory signal makes it to the cortex, you will become consciously aware of it. And there's actually a very specific part of the cortex in the parietal lobe called the somatosensory cortex. Somatosensory cortex. Now this cortex is important because it actually contains a map of the body on it. So there's going to be an area map to the hand, an area map to the foot, an area map to the back, for example. And think about it like this. Areas of the body that have a higher density of neurons associated with them, like the hand, for example, it will have a larger area of the somatosensory cortex dedicated to it. Now, <clears throat> that's the cortex. When we go deeper into the brain, you can find a couple of structures here. These two things here, they're called the thalamus. The thalamus is the sorting center of the brain. It's the post office. When a signal gets there, it takes it and decides what it wants to do with it. Where does it need to go? You've got the brain stem here. Now, with the brain stem, you've got the midbrain, you've got the pons, and you've got the medulla. And so that these are the three parts of the brain stem. And you need to be aware of these areas. And then you've got our spinal cord here. Let's begin. Now, there's actually a couple different types of ascending pieces of information or ascending pathways or sensory pathways. So we're going to take a look at a pathway that's called the, and it's got a terrible name. I didn't make it up, so I apologize. It's called the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. Isn't that an awesome name? Your answer is no. So what is the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway? It allows for us to have, it basically sends, allows for us to send up to the brain information about fine touch, two point discrimination, and conscious proprioception. And you might be looking at these going, what the hell are all these things? So fine touch, not gross touch, a very specific touch, the touch that if I were to take a feather and tickle your hand, for example, that sort of information. Two point discrimination is if you were to take two pins and I were to close my eyes and you were to put on my arm, for example, and put one pin in one area and another pin a certain distance apart, and you ask me, can you feel those two pins as separate things? Now, in areas that have a high density of neurons like my hands, well, those pins are going to be only a couple of millimeters apart before I go, yeah, I can't distinguish the difference between the two pins. But on my back, where I've got a lower density of neurons, you can have those two pins like five centimeters apart from each other, and I'll go, oh, it feels as though it's one pin. Right? That's two point discrimination. Then you've got conscious proprioception. So that's proprioception is knowing where you are in your own space. Okay? It's my ability to close my eyes and you say, touch your nose and I can do it. I can't actually feel where my nose is, but I know where I know where it is because of proprioceptors. Okay? Um, all right. So that's conscious proprioception. So this is that pathway. We're going to focus on that. And the second pathway we're going to focus on is that of, uh, Temperature and pain, which is an old pathway that travels up to the brain together. And this is actually called the spinothalamic pathway. So I'm going to write this as the spinothalamic pathway. Let's write it like this because its actual name is the spinothalamic pathway.
and it is for, just like I've done here, temperature and pain. So these are the two ascending pathways we're going to take a look at. First, let's take a look at the dorsal column medial lumniscus pathway. Someone takes a feather and tickles your finger. It triggers receptors in the neurons of your hand, and this begins to send an action potential down the neuron of your hand into your spinal cord. Now, what it does is as soon as it enters your spinal cord, it starts to ascend up the same side of the spinal cord that it enters. It goes up, 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 until it hits the medulla. Here at the medulla, this neuron will synapse or speak with a second neuron. And this neuron crosses to the other side. When it crosses to the other side, the term we use is decussation. It decussates. And then from here, it continues to ascend until it hits the thalamus. So again, the sorting center. Here it's gonna synapse with another neuron. This third neuron, remember the thalamus being the sorting center goes, where does it need to go? It knows it's come from the hand. So I need to send it to the part of the somatosensory cortex mapped to the hand. And that's exactly what it does through the third neuron and sends it to that somatosensory cortex. We have now just become consciously aware of some sort of whether it be fine touch, two-point discrimination, or conscious proprioception associated with the hand. What can you see? It is a three-neuron chain. One, two, three. It ascends up the same side of the spinal cord that it enters. So that's the dorsal column medial lumniscus pathway. Let's compare it to the spinothalamic pathway. So now somebody pricks your finger with a pen. It triggers nociceptors, which will send an action potential down a neuron into your spinal cord. Now, when it enters your spinal cord, it may ascend up a little bit. It may actually descend down a little bit. But at around about the level that it enters, it synapses with the second neuron. And it's here that it decussates or crosses. Basically, at the level that it enters, around about, it decussates once it synapses with the second neuron. Now it ascends up, 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 up the spinal cord, goes past the brain stem and goes straight to the thalamus. Hence why it's called the spinothalamic pathway because it goes from the spinal cord straight to the thalamus. Here, it synapses with the third neuron again and throws it to a part of the brain that deals with the hand, but now we know it's a painful stimulus. That's how we interpret that piece of nociception. So again, still three neuron chain. First neuron synapses with the second neuron, which decussates immediately or at the level in which it enters a roundabout and then ascends up, synapses at the thalamus and then goes to the area map, to the hand. It also throws it off to other areas like the hypothalamus, the amygdala and so forth so that you have those other um, uh, experiences associated with pain, like being wide awake, um, having a negative emotional experience and so forth. But let's just focus on this conscious experience here. What is the major difference you can see between these two pathways? The major difference is the side in which it ascends. Very important. Very important clinically if somebody experiences a hemi lesion, some sort of damage to the spinal cord on one side. As you can see, if a damage is on this side, what does it mean? So remember, you can see here that obviously the opposing side of the brain deals with the opposing side of the body and vice versa. But in this case, if this is me and that's my right hand, but I've got damage to the right side of my spinal cord, I'm gonna have problems experiencing fine touch, two point discrimination and conscious proprioception. But if you pricked my right hand with a pin, what happens? I can still feel it because it's not affected because it crossed the other side, right? And the same thing goes if you've got some sort of hemi lesion on the opposing side, right? This in part is called brown saccade syndrome, and I've done a whole video on that as well. So this is a quick run through of the differences between the two types or two major types of sensory or ascending pathways. 
Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.